I invite everyone please to stand and to turn towards the back of the church. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. In the waters of baptism, Woody died with Christ, and rose with him to new life. May he now share with him eternal glory.
off our very warm welcome to all of you as we gather together in this church, the house of God, as we present before our father Woody, and also as we pray for him and mourn his loss and celebrate his life. As we're gathered here, let us pray. O God, who are mercy for sinners and the happiness of your saints, give, we pray, to your servant, Woody, for whom today we perform the fraternal offices of burial, a share with your chosen ones in the blessedness you give, so that on the day of resurrection, free from the bonds of mortality, he may come before your face through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. And I'd like to invite forward Caitlin, please, for the, fir for the first reading. A reading from the Book of Wisdom. The souls of the just are in the hand of God, and no torment shall touch them. They seemed, in the view of the foolish, to be dead, and their passing away was thought an affliction, and their going forth from us utter destruction. But they are in peace, for if before men indeed they be punished, yet is their hope full of immortality. <clears throat> Chastised a little, they shall be greatly blessed, because God tried them and found them worthy of himself. As gold in the furnace, he proved them, and as sacrificial offerings, he took them to himself. In the time of their visitation, they shall shine and shall dart about as sparks through stubble. They shall judge nations and rule over peoples, and the Lord shall be their king forever. Those who trust in him shall understand truth, and the faithful shall abide with him in love, because grace and mercy are with his holy ones, and his care is with his elect. The word of the Lord. from the book of Romans. None of us lives for oneself and no one dies for oneself. For if we live, we live for the Lord, and if we die, <clears throat> we die for the Lord. So then, whether we live or die, we are the Lord's. For this is why Christ died and came to life, that he might be Lord of both the dead and the living. Why then do you judge your brother? Or you, why do you look down on your brother? 
for we shall all stand before the judgment seat of God. For it is written, As I live, says the Lord, every knee shall bend before me, and every tongue shall give praise to God. So then each of us shall give an account of himself to God. The word of the Lord. with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up the mountain, and after he had sat down, his disciples came to him. He began to teach them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are they who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the land. Blessed are they who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be satisfied. Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Blessed are the clean of heart for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are they who are persecuted for the sake of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when they insult you and persecute you and utter every kind of evil against you falsely because of me. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward will be great in heaven. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated just for a moment. Once again, once again I want to wel warmly welcome all of you. And I, if I may also, on behalf of Immaculate Heart of Mary, offer our condolences to all of you, the friends and the family of Woody. I want to speak today especially into our faith, because it's our faith that really is meant to enliven our hearts, to strengthen them whenever we experience any loss, and of course especially on this very great loss of someone who is loved so deeply. But I want to speak about faith first by way of our hope. And hope sometimes in English isn't as strong as it is when we when we use it and when we use it commonly in English. It's not as strong as it is when we when we're speaking about it in our Christian sense. We might say things, especially here in Minnesota, we hope it's not going to snow in October. And we know that that is a false hope. There's nothing good coming from that. But with Jesus, it is so different. We speak about our hope, and Paul speaks about hope as sure and certain. And why is that? It's because Jesus has entered all the way into all of our joy and all of the goodness of life. That's the wonder of his incarnation. But he's also entered into every shadow, every darkness, every pain, every sorrow. And he is there. And so when, when, when we experience those things, it's our faith, it's our hope 
that assures us Christ is working, he is there. And even as we are experiencing this great pain, we know he is there working. He's not done yet because we're still experiencing the pain, the sorrow. That's why we call it hope, because there's still work being done. But we already know he's already gone there. And so our hope is sure and certain. So we, we lean into that hope today, reveling in the goodness of God that we, with the surety that he is here and working. It's so, and so it, it's our hope that really bolsters our faith to proclaim that Woody is right there, right now, before our Father. It's a beautiful thing to proclaim. And it's that part of our faith, really, that's, that's also meant to be emblazoned in our hearts and ultimately to work its way up into our imagination with a kind of a wonder. What is it that Woody might be experiencing today as he is there before our Father? In a, in a beautiful way, we remember that what Woody is experiencing is not so different from what we are experiencing here. At least, it's not so far away. Because one of the things that we proclaim as Catholics when we are gathered here together at the Eucharist, heaven is very close. The saints, the angels, those whom we love so deeply who have gone before us, and of course God's own self, present here. Jesus has promised that wherever two or three are gathered, there am I in their midst. And heaven is wherever he is. So he is here, and all of those who are in heaven are here. It's by way of faith. We don't get to see them, but with our eyes, we don't get to touch them. But the truth remains. They are here. And as we are honoring Woody today, we imagine that those who are in heaven are also looking upon Woody, honoring him, gazing upon the wonder with which God has worked in his life, which all of us, all of you especially here know, the wonder of God's work, the presence there. And so I just want to recall some things that for sure they will be see, seeing, but also to acknowledge that there's so much more, and I know that you carry that in your hearts, but it's something for us to ponder today. First, I was just imagining the wonder of Woody's name, which reveals his, his gift of being a carpenter, working with wood very early in his life and throughout his life. It, it can't be lost. It's not lost on us, and it would not be lost in heaven. The similarity of Woody, just in that simple fact that he shares with Jesus himself. The wonder of Jesus coming to work with his hands and Woody sharing that with him. We can be certain that our Father sees in that mysterious way the image of his Son. I also had such a, a, a precious privilege to be able to listen to some of Woody's children speak about him. And I, I always know that it, it's such holy ground to listen to the way that they speak, the way that they did speak about their parent, their, their father here. And it is beautiful. And I'm just struck that how the, the reverence with which they held, they hold Woody. And it's important for us to remember that even as Woody is brought forward in heaven, even the angels, and I, we, we don't always talk about angels, but we remember them today, especially when we're drawing closer to heaven. The angels are so reverential, especially for the presence of those who are so deeply loved. And the, the angels will not be outdone in reverence. And so just look upon the reverence with which Woody's children hold him. We know that the angels also, in a way, 
are reverencing him. That's a wonderful gift just to, to, to ponder and to consider. Well, part, part of what the Woody's children shared with me, they didn't use this word, but I, but I might use it, but I might say it, was his wisdom. He was a deep thinker, not always full of words, although a, a fantastic conversationalist. He was, he had a calming perspective on life, had something to say about it, a deep knowledge of the importance of letting some things go, but also living life. And I, I just had a sense that as I was listening to the children, that that was a message that was imparted to them deeply, a great gift of wisdom, a way of living in this life. And it's true the way he lived life, and it's beautiful. As I was reading the gospel today, too, I, I was struck by the way you know, Jesus' disciples came to him to listen to the wisdom that came out of his life, the right perspective that he gave them. And in a beautiful way, Woody shared in that. He was revealing, handing down wisdom. And what a tremendous gift. So we know that our Father also sees that in him. All of, angel, all of the angels are praising that, singing that in him. I was also struck by just, so just another comment that his children made was his generosity, his eagerness and always ready to help someone. That's a mark of deep virtue. <laughs> It's, it's funny when we see it in someone who lives, not funny, it's, it's sometimes it can be easy to overlook it when we see it in someone who, whose life just manifests it easily and simply. But to, to be eager to help means someone who has embraced a lot of suffering, a lot of self-denial, an ease and a quickness of that. It reminds me of Jesus' own words, I have come not to be served, but to serve. And that's something that Woody embraced in his life. In, in that way, he's become even a greater image of Jesus. So all of that, and more, and I, all of us here know the gratitude and, and the reverence that we hold in our hearts for Woody. But today we just also remember that heaven is doing the same thing. Heaven is very close to us today. And so it's for that reason that I would not, it's, it's the other part of our faith, that when we gather in faith, we remember that those who have gone before us are not gone in the ultimate sense. We proclaim deeply that they are still living living in heaven, living before God, present with us when we are gathered together with God, God living in us, so in a mysterious way, even those who have gone beyond us are living very, very, very close. And so it's for that reason, in the moments, the weeks, the months, the years ahead, we can expect to still have some contact with Woody. In fact, I wouldn't be surprised if you've already experienced some of it. It's because he's still living and his love and his care for you is still real and still active. It's a little bit different, but it's still real. And so we lean into that truth today and remember it. So it's in that truth, it's in that faith and that hope that we turn to God to pray. So I'd just like to invite us to take a moment of silence and to remember Woody and to present him bef before our Father. Now I'd like to invite us to stand and I'd like to invite forward Madeline, please, for the prayers of the faithful. For Woody, who has given new life in baptism and nourished at the table of the Savior, 
May he now have a place at the heavenly banquet with God and all the saints in glory. We pray to the Lord. For Woody's children and spouses, may their sadness be softened by his love for them, their love for each other, and by prayerful support of family and friends, we pray. For Woody's grandchildren and great-grandchildren, may the love and care of their parents reflect the love Woody has for them, we pray. For Lloyd's relatives, may memories of family time celebrated together be a source of gratitude for the gift of life, we pray. For family friends, may their love and respect for Lloyd bring others together in friendship, we pray. For our relatives and friends who have died, may they welcome Lloyd into the peace and happiness of heaven, we pray. For all of us here who are blessed in knowing and loving Woody, may we live with the hope uh, that one day we will share life with God and all our loved ones for all eternity, we pray. Heavenly Father, we, your sons and daughters, come before you with hearts filled, filled with sorrow at the passing of Woody, but also filled with gratitude for the gift of his life. We ask that you would draw near to us to comfort our hearts at his loss and to dry the tears of those who weep, and to grant all of these our needs through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. And I'd like to invite towards the back of the church for the presentation of the gifts, Madeline, Evan, Elise, and Lady. brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father.
Be near, O Lord, we pray, to your servant Woody, on whose funeral day we offer you this sacrifice of conciliation, so that should any stain of sin have clung to him, or any human fault have affected him, it may by your loving gift be forgiven and wiped away through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. In him the hope of blessed resurrection has dawned, that those saddened, by the certainty of dying, may be consoled by the promise of immortality to come. Indeed, for your faithful Lord, life is changed, not ended. And when this earthly dwelling turns to dust, an eternal dwelling is made ready for them in heaven. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. seated as you're able. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of a new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. As we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, 
we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Bernard, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also your servant, Woody, whom you have called today from this world to yourself. Grant that he who was united with your son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to sing. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer one another the sign of peace. Take away the seeds of the world. 
like to invite you please to kneel or be seated as you're able. For communion today, everyone is invited to come forward if you'd like in the communion line. If you won't be receiving communion today, simply make a sign like this. We'll be happy to give you a blessing. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. You shall cross the barren desert, but you shall not die of thirst. You shall wander far in safety, though you do not know the way. You shall speak your words in foreign lands, and all will understand. You shall see.
Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that your servant Woody, who today has journeyed from this world, may by this sacrifice be cleansed and freed from sin, and so receive the everlasting joy of the resurrection. Through Christ our Lord. Before we go our separate ways, let us take leave of our brother. May our farewell express our affection for him. May it ease our sadness and strengthen our hope. One day we shall joyfully greet him again, when the love of Christ, which conquers all things, destroys even death itself. To your hands, Father of mercies, we commend our brother Woody in the sure and certain hope that together with all who have died in Christ, he will rise with him on the last day. We give you thanks for the blessings which you bestowed upon Woody in this life. They are signs to us of your goodness and of our fellowship with the saints in Christ. Merciful Lord, Turn toward us and listen to our prayers. Open the gates of paradise to your servant and help us who remain to comfort one another with assurances of faith until we all meet in Christ and are with you and with our brother forever. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. In peace, let us take our brother to his place of rest. Sings my 
Mountain crowd. 